Righto guys, it's about time we introduce you to the new member of the family, the 300 behind us, all right? Now we haven't come up with a name for it yet, Beck's still deciding, but suggestions welcome. If you've got a name for the 300, drop it in the comments, mate. In this video, I'm just gonna give you a bit of a rig rundown on it, uh, how it come about, how we built it, the gear we used, um, and the process, and see what you guys reckon. So um, to kick it off, I just wanna say that we have had um, a lot of help from our brands and partners that we've worked with for a long time now through the channel. Uh, so a lot of their gear is on this car, um, full disclaimer there. But if we can help you out with any uh, discounts along the way, I'll put a bit of info down below, discount codes, and uh, there will be some links in the video description at the end. But you're gonna get a lot of good info out of this. And I think um, I'm not gonna be, well, I'm probably gonna be a bit biased, but I think it's probably one of the best looking 300s out there, just quietly. You know, <laughs> I have to say that's my car. But no, it does, it looks really neat. It's not overdone. It looks better than factory, in my opinion. And we did a lot of research to get all this gear to make it look as good as it does, all right? So if we can help you out, save you hours on the internet trying to find what's gonna suit, there you go. Keep watching and we'll fill you in. All right, so let's kick off with what it is. It's a 300 series, it's a VX, okay? Under that color there, it's actually a graphite car, but we've put a wrap on that, I'll tell you about it. Um, to get it looking like that, we um, employed the services of this fella over here. There you go. So if you haven't heard of Caleb at Pro Touring Concepts, do yourself a favor, jump on Insta and check out his work. He's also got a really great website as well, but he built our 200 series. If you've watched those videos, which I'll put up here, uh, he managed the dual cab conversion for our last car, the 200 series, and it's been an absolute weapon. So when this come about, uh, where else would I go but back to Caleb? So a bit of feedback for you about Pro Touring is they look after the whole build. So they buy the car from Toyota, they ship it around the joint, they get all the bar work fitted, they do the suspension, they do the full electrical fit out, which I'll show you in the back, uh, and they get the wrap done, they get the roof rack done, they get paint protection, they get underbody stuff, they get performance work, mate, they do the whole show and they deliver you a turnkey package. So it takes all the stress out of finding all the, the right people to do it for you. You just rock up and pick up this car fully done. How good's that? Uh, it's graphite underneath, but this here is a wrap. We had to choose between getting ceramic paint protection again or going a wrap. So I thought I'd do something different. Now this is from uh, a mob on uh, the Gold Coast called Eye Candy Motorsports. They do the wrap. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than paint protection, probably close to two grand more expensive to get this done. But I sort of, I don't know, just wanted it to be a bit more individual and have its own color. And I always liked the matte finish. So we've gone with that. It's called anthracite, the color of the wrap. Uh, but yeah, it's probably one of the biggest features of it is the color, right? Looks good, doesn't it? Bull bar and spotties. What do we got on the front here? This is an ARB Summit Mark II bar. It's a winch bar, so I've got a worn VR Evo winch in there as well, which I'll show you. But probably first thing is you're going, what's that color, hey? Now this is a Pro Touring Special. They actually get this sandblaster back and put a UV powder coating on it, which is good for touring because it doesn't fade or anything in the sun and it's sort of really tough for scratches and stuff as well. So there you go. For spotties on this bar, we've got the ARB Intensity IQs. Now, I reckon they're probably smarter than I am, which makes it difficult to tell you about. So what you've got is like spots and floods and work lamps. Uh, they're all adjustable via an intelligent controller inside and also on an app. So you can set preset buttons with your app as to what light comes on and what intensity level you want it for and all that. Very smart, uh, but the best thing is they are probably the brightest spotlight I've had on a car. They are out of control, mate. So underneath the bar, we've got the ARB recovery points on here. So they're bolted in through to the chassis. Got one either side there. They're fully load rated as recovery points uh, just for any um, winching and um, recovery needs that you need. Um, very vital to have those these days. You've all seen on the internet the epic fails of um, snatching and stuff off shipping tie down hooks. It can be very dangerous. So make sure you invest in a good set of recovery points on your build. Now up here, this is a worn Evo winch tucked down in there. There we go. That's all got on synthetic rope on it and a remote control, so it's easy to use. You've also got a hardwired bit if your battery ever goes flat in the controller. And then under here, I like this jobby. Have a look at this. I run this on the last car too. It's a Factor 55 Ultra Hook. And up here for UHF, we've got the Oricom 
UHF again inside, which is a DTX 4200X. Now this also comes with an add-on whip that I can add on here. You just unscrew this, put a longer whip on top for a bit of extra range and gain. Um, but mainly, we're just talking to each other at the moment, me and Beck, between this and the 200, so we'll just leave it as is. And there you go, that is the bull bar up front. Doesn't look good. Fully designed like for this car with lots of cutouts and airflow. Um, because there's a lot of coolers on that in the front of these things. So they had to redesign this summit bar to actually let enough airflow in and not cook these new 300s. But they've done a bloody good job. GVM upgrade, what have we done? All right, it is an ARB BP51 stage two GVM upgrade. So this includes, I'll give you a walk around and show you, you've got BP51 shocks front and rear. Okay, we'll have a quick look in there. They also come with upgraded upper control arms, old man emu control arms, and also remote resi shocks front and rear if you tuck in here, there's your remote resi. Now these are also all fully adjustable rebound and compression too. You can get a tool and grab on there on your shocky and adjust your rebound and compression. Uh, up the back, we have the same sort of setup. There's your shocky and your remote resi. And we've got 400 kilo constant springs and airbag man helper bags in the back here. There you go. What does that give us? That gives us 3,920 kilos of GVM. That, that's what the car can weigh. But we retain uh, the GCM of 6750. So you've got to really be careful if you want to tow on a three and a half ton van. Uh, you still have to watch your weights with this to be able to pull three and a half ton. We're fine with the boat because it's only under two tonne. It's not a drama. But uh, when we did weigh this full of fuel with one person in it, it was 3,080 kilos. So do the math. Uh, with a three and a half ton van, we'd probably just sneak under, I reckon. But anyway, we'll have to um, put it on the scales when we chuck the van on and see how we go. But uh, that's what it includes um, suspension wise. Also with that upgrade, what it does, um, it turns it into a, a different category vehicle. So it changes it to an NB1 category, which is a commercial goods carrying vehicle because it can now carry one ton of payload over tear over factory tear, okay? Now what that does is um, a couple of things. It obviously gives you more payload, but it turns it into a, it's not a luxury car anymore. So if you get Caleb to build it, um, when he organizes it and buys it from Toyota and stuff, you don't pay luxury car tax. So there's a hot tip. But that's through Caleb. I don't know how to do it privately. Uh, that's a deal they've got worked out. Now, a couple of other things that you'll see on this, this is all part of the stage two upgrade, is these extra indicators on the front quarter panels. They have to be included because, I don't know, because it's a commercial goods carrying vehicle, there's certain distances that things have to be. Um, so that has to be included. Also at the back, um, we've had to add some new reverse lights because apparently because of the lift, the factory reverse lights are now too high to meet ADR standards. So you have to put another set on down below. Anyway, pretty weird, hey? And also um, there is for extra strength, on the rear coils, there is a bolt-in um, bracing that goes on the rear diff. Uh, that's part of the stage two upgrade as well. So there you go. That's how you get 39, 20, my friends. It's a lot, eh? It's good. I mean, um, would be, you'd be struggling to hit that when you're not towing, but by the time you put, say, 300 kilos of ball weight on, uh, yeah, you'd be getting up there. No dramas. All right, that is the GVM upgrade. Schmicko, and I'll tell you what, one thing, it is smooth, mate. Well, I haven't played around with the shocks and that yet. The boys at Pro Touring set that up. Uh, but I tell you, we did this pothole road out to Byfield in Yapoon, and it was, it was gold. I couldn't believe how fast we were going through the potholes. It was so smooth. So very happy with how it performs. Right, roof rack set up, what are we running? Uh, we have the ARB base rack. They are bloody unreal, mate. If you haven't had a look at them, check them out. They're a one-piece alloy, fully welded, roof platform and they are sick mate. They have a really cool design for all the mounting systems as well. So you can have a heap of um, different stuff bolted on top of these and they go on super easy. They've got a full backbone system that runs down the top of the car and you also got a wind deflector under there and their purpose built sort of um, designed light bar which is designed for being up on the roof because of the shape of the lens it reduces any glare off the bonnet, all right? So it's really good for driving at night. You don't th get that glare in your eyes. Got a solar panel up here. Pro Touring rig all that up and it runs down into the battery system. And then we're running the ARB Esperance rooftop tent. So it's a clamshell tent. 
And uh, what it does is a clamshell pops open one way and you pull your ladder and your tent out the other way. I'll pop some photos in for you to have a look at. Fit three kids in there, no dramas, or me and the missus. Too easy. And um, finish it off, we've got a couple of camp lights on either side, so one here, one here. All wired into a couple of switches in the back by Pro Touring. Happy days. While we're talking about the roof rack, um, it's a bit of a grey area for me. I stuck with a lightweight rooftop tent and the base rack uh, because there seems to be a bit of confusion around roof load capacities on the 300 because of the aluminium roof. Now, three um, Toyota themselves don't even list a roof load capacity in their specs for the 300, so that's hard. But then there's other mobs out there now with boatloaders for them and um, tents and other things that are like well over 100 kilos. Um, so I've stuck with the lightweight stuff, alloy roof. Uh, I don't need any more up there. But interesting to see what will happen in the future um, as to how strong they can actually be uh, with people putting tinnies up there and that. If you've got any info, let me know. Um, I'm always learning. Um, but for me, it was a um, very grey area and I couldn't really quite figure it out. Uh, so it made sense to keep it light. Keep it simple. Under the bonnet, mate, what have you done? Um, not much, to be honest, but I'll give you a look. So these things, mate, they look like a spaceship under here. Look at it, it's just all plastic and guards and whatnot. Anyway, two-way twin turbo V6 diesel. There you go. Now, um, I'll just pull a couple of covers off and show you. So under the bonnet, it's pretty simple at the moment. Um, under there, there is battery cables and stuff, and the same on the other side. There is about 57 fuse boxes under the bottom of this thing. I have no idea what they do as yet. Hopefully, I'll never have to find out. Uh, and there's no performance work done on this engine as yet. Uh, plans are to drop it off at Cookie uh, at Diesel Power Unlimited, and he can put in a new airbox, because apparently they're still having dusting issues with these airboxes, even after all the issues with the 200. Can you believe it? Uh, so I'll get a tune on the dyno and a new airbox. We've already got the snorkel fitted. Uh, and while we're there, uh, we're talking um, performance upgrades. If you watch this last video, I'll put one up in here. Uh, it's the first look you would have got at this 300, but we fitted a three and a half inch torquid exhaust from the DPF back. There you go. And we also put in the electronic exhaust, which makes it sound like a V8 supercar if you want. But I'll tell you what, it's a neat fit, all DIY install. Um, even though I've got the lads to help me at Pro Touring, but you can easily do that on your driveway at home, slap it in if you end up getting a 300. Super neat system, really easy to use. And um, on performance, I've still got uh, a torque at pedal chip to put on the accelerator. I'll do another video later on down the track. That's one thing I have noticed driving this thing, I reckon the pedal chip with, will help with quite a bit. It does have quite a, a laggy accelerator, so pedal chip should snap that up and um, make it feel a bit perkier, you know, a bit more poke. There's the plastic cover removed. This is where the battery lives in the 300 up here. Um, and then all we've done, Pro Touring have done their package on this car with a basic Tow Pro chargers, light bars, um, DC to DC. And this is all their work. Super neat, um, all zip tied in there, heat shrinked, labeled. We've got light bar, tow power, DC charge. Um, what do we got? There's some circuit breakers here. Down here, there's a, a Red Arc Smart Start, if you see that. That's a VSR, so you don't drain your battery. And that's about it, mate. Super neat and tidy, easy to look after. Everything's labelled so you can chase down any dramas if you ever have any. In saying that though, I've had three years of touring in the last rig, wired up by pro touring. I haven't even looked at a fuse panel, mate. It just does the job day in, day out. I'll tell you what though, God help me if I ever need to chase down a fuse panel in this thing. Christ, look at this. There's one here, there's another one here, there's another one over here. And there's like two under the dash and stuff inside there. I have no idea. Hopefully it just goes and goes. But anyway. Hey, on that subject of going and going, since we've got this, I've had a fair few messages about people saying there's a lot of complaints out there about these things chewing oil. So I haven't, I haven't even dipped the stick on this yet, to be honest. But if you've got any info on that, let me know because I'd like to keep me um, 
nose to the ground on that in case I can um, have any dramas. I can sort it out early. I don't know how it's using oil, if it's burning it or what, but anyway, drop it in the comments if you know anything about it. So wheels and tyres, we've stuck with our King Off-Road and Toyo packages. We run that on all our gear. These ones here are King Off-Road Grapplers, right? They're an 18 inch wheel and these are Toyo Open Countries. They are a 285 65 18 and they are bloody nice, I tell you. So these ones are an RT. Uh, we've got AT3s on all the other gear and we get super good mileage out of them. They're quiet, they're smooth. Uh, they're comfy to ride on and they're great for the touring we do and the beach work and gravel roads and all that. This one, I've gone for the rugged terrain. I figure, my plan is I want to do a few more, I don't know, not gnarly or crazy, but a few more harder four-wheel drive tracks, right? So I figured if I put some rugged terrain tyres on it, it might handle the clay and mud a bit better. And uh, so far, so good with the highway driving. Awesome, mate. They're not noisy. They're not heavy to steer. Uh, and I reckon we should get just as good a mileage out of them. We're on track to get 80,000 Ks out of the AT3s on the other gear. So that's good going. If we can get close to that, I'll be stoked. Anyway, that's the wheel and tire package. All right, swing around here. One of the biggest questions we got about this build was rear storage. How are you gonna manage it? Hey, what are you gonna put in there to make it work? Well, I'll tell you what, I left it up to Caleb. I said, mate, do your best. I need um, the best set of drawers and the most functional unit you can put in here for me to travel with the fam. And this is what he's come up with and I'm bloody happy with it, hey? Doesn't it look sexy? It just fits. So this draw system, it is loaded drawers, all right? So what we've got, we've got one big storage drawer here and we've got a fridge pull-out drawer with a kitchen table. So let's pull it out and have a look. Pop the lock. Oh, look at this, mate. You can't go travel in Australia without a bottle opener on the back, hey? Let's go. Over we go. This is the brand here. I'll put all their info down below as well. Check them out on Insta. They do some absolute mint work. Uh, inside, I still haven't figured out what I'm going to store in there quite yet. It's all new to me, but I've got these ARB cargo gear. They've got some clear top cargo gear cases now which are bloody handy, so I've slapped a couple of them in there. And uh, we'll just start throwing a bit of fruit in there and see what works, but that's a nice big storage drawer. We've got our fridge uh, slide and also a kitchen table, which I'll pull out. In there is an ARB 40 litre zero fridge. It's a fridge or freezer. Absolute cracker, actually. Um, really good on power. And it's in a little transit cover, which makes it look super neat. Uh, there's a cover over the top, so this is um, removable. Uh, you can remove the fridge and also put like another hard top across here if you want to just have another drawer and a full set of storage. Now there's yet to be um, one thing we need to add in when it becomes available is a cargo barrier. That way I can probably put another shelf across the top and add a bit more storage. But at this stage, uh, we couldn't find a, a cargo barrier to suit. So we'll just keep it simple for now. But in the future that will be added in. Recovery gear at the top there. Um, ARB Tread Pros are mounted there for the moment, sitting behind the seat uh, until I figure out a way to mount them up here so the tent still opens. But that will come. But uh, yeah, I can't leave home without them just in case we need them or I'll be regretting that big time. Uh, over here we have our side marine panel. We have a full Enerdrive battery system in this, which I'll show you as well. And there's an outlet for our ARB twin compressor. And here's our two switches for our work lights on the side of the base rack. All right, left and right. Come over this side, we have an inverter in the back of here. Here's the inverter control, so we can turn that on and off via here. I've also got a 12 volt Siggy and two USBs. All right, so little power outlets. And then we've got two power points. All right, so we can run our kettle, toaster, induction cooker out on our kitchen table here. And the 2000 watt inverter lives down in there. Turn him off. There you go. All right, let's pull this out and give you a look. So here's the kitchen table. Slide him out. It locks out into position like that. How good. And then um, you grab these two yellow tabs and you pull the fridge drawer out. Out she comes. Happy days, it locks out as well. Fridge lives in there, I'll open her up. Plenty of room for beer and food and whatnot. And I'll tell you what, that's gonna be handy when um, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but when I load up on coral trout up north, I'll turn that into a freezer to bring some home. <laughs> it's wishful thinking, isn't it? Anyway, plenty of room there, it works well. We've been um, making lunches and that on here when we're out and about during the day. Uh, all right, and now I need to um, pull these off and have a look. I'll show you what's in down in here and down the other side. So this side wing's removable, and inside here we have got our ARB twin compressor. We've also got our compressor control, solenoids, and then just some tidy wiring and stuff that runs all the battery system and whatnot. 
and come back here. Here's a neat little function anyway, because I've got airbags in this thing. See this little valve here? If I uh, leave it this way, it's facing straight out to the outlet. I can plug in my hose and pump up my tires. Or if I switch it here, this way, it uh, sends it through to the compressor control, which um, is an app. So I've got this app on my phone. It's an ARB pressure control app. And I can control those solenoids, and it's linked to my airbags. So I can pump my airbags up and down via the phone. Don't have to get the hose out and plug them in individually to each Schrader valve. So that's super handy. I like it. That's tucked away neatly in there. How good. Uh, now, I tell you what, all this design come about. Caleb's had this car for quite a while now because we were waiting on GVM upgrade stuff. So we had plenty of time to um, measure, uh, fit, pull out, remeasure, try a few different options, uh, figure out what's going to work best. So this um, car of mine was the R&D weapon that designed all this for the new 300. So I'm, um, I'm stoked if I could help out and uh, end up with a package like this. Bloody good, eh? All right, let's show the other side. All right, we've taken that one off. Uh, there's the inverter in there. That is a 2000 watt E-Pro inverter. All inner drive gear, again in this rig. That's all we've ever used in our Turin rigs. It's never let us down. Uh, let's go and show you the good stuff. All right, here's where the good stuff is. Check that out, how bloody neat it is. So that's the back of the drawer carcass. You just fold the seats up. And this is all the battery gear, circuit protection, DC to DC. I'll start from this side, I suppose. All the wiring. Uh, there's a shunt for the Simarine monitoring. It tells you what the, um, how many amps is coming in, how many amps is going out, what your light's using, what your fridge is using. There's a circuit breaker for the battery system. Then you've got all your fuses labelled down here. And then over here, we've got our DC to DC 40 plus. So I've got these in the van, the boat, the car, everything. They bloody unit, mate. That thing there takes alternator current from the car and it turns it into up to 40 amps or a bit more of battery charge to go into the 200 amp battery. It also has its own separate solar input. So it's an MPPT solar controller. So there's a solar feed coming in here off that panel on the base rack. And that also keeps the battery chopped up while we're not charging. So that's a good way to keep your battery going when you've got a fridge in the back and you're pulled up for a while. Yeah. And here's the heart of the system, mate. Look at that. 200 amp lithium BTEC in there. It's a ripper. I have been using the Enerdrive gear for seven years, mate, touring and using it hard, like running air cons off it, induction, all the stuff you never thought you could run off a battery, and I've never had one fail. The life cycle on them is just ridiculous. So worth the money, in my opinion. Buy once, buy right. Isn't that schmicko? Again, pro touring, boys. Oh, wee. You nailed it. Oh, look. There's a little bit of space in there. I might be able to put something else down in there. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's the drawer system, mate. Load of drawers. I am stoked with it. Ah, far out. Like, simple, easy to use, looks good, uh, and it's super functional for what we want. So, happy days. Hang on, I forgot this. There's a light up here, look. We can put it on this way. There's white light one way, orange the other. Keep the bugs away. Thinks of everything, old Caleb. <laughs> Uh, the interior of the 300, what does it look like? Have you done anything? Well, I tell you what, we've kept it pretty basic. Um, it is a lot nicer than the 200, uh, and it's a VX, so you've got sort of added extras of leather and uh, a few extra comforts and stuff like that. Up here, there is a sunroof that we'll never use because we've got the base rack on top, uh, but that just comes as part of the VX package. They're super nice inside. Now, why did I go VX? Well, if you've watched my other vids about the 200, it was probably one of my biggest regrets was not spending the extra bit of cash and getting the extra um, functions and features. Um, and so it was the same with this one. I thought, oh, if I'm doing it, learn from your past mistakes, mate. Don't get the GXL. So I didn't. I got the VX and I'm bloody happy with it. I'll just give you a scroll through here. I really don't know what a lot of it does yet. There's a lot of fancy stuff in here with sort of oh, blind spot things and lane control and all this stuff. It's very quite tricky um, if I start him up. The one good thing that um, you can you can actually program driver positions so your steering wheel and your seat moves as you get in for different drivers. Coming across here, uh, inside this is where the, the radio lives. So same one as every other car we've had, the Oricon DTX 4200. And the one big thing I like about this is watch this. I can listen to channel 14 and I can listen to channel 40. 
and I can swap between the two. So it's good when we're traveling now, me and Beck run on 14 uh, and we still leave it on 40 so you can hear truckies and other road users. And then if you want to talk to someone, you just scroll through to whichever channel you want to re um, reply on and talk on that. Works a treat, mate. Uh, I love them. Simple, easy, nice handpiece with all their controls right there. And the boys have fitted a um, unit down in here somewhere. There you go, upside down. That's where the head unit for the UHF goes, hidden away in there. Pretty nice, eh? All right. Big difference from the 200 is um, a nice big head unit across there. Easy to use, nice and visual. Uh, one thing I love, it's got bloody heated and cooled seats. Uh, the aircon seats are bloody nice, eh? Hey? Blowing up your bum while you're driving on a hot day. And then coming into the back, you'll notice that they are smaller. So I don't know why they did it, but it's a smaller rig than the 200. So you've got less space in the cab. There's less head height and there's also less width when you jump in it. This seems to be a lot narrower. You're closer to the passenger and there's definitely less leg room um, in the back for the kids. Still all right for our kids, but if you had three teenagers, uh, you'd be wondering why they got, went smaller than the 200. But they're super comfy. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's real leather. I think it's fake leather, but I don't care. It's still bloody nice. And then, yeah, I don't know what else to tell you, mate. It's bloody good. Here's our, um, here's the intelligent controller for the, the um, intensity IQs. And you've got your LED light bar for the roof. Come over this side for um, for towing. We've got um, the Red Arc Tow Pro controller fitted in there, and a couple other random switches. There's your air compressor there that turns on in the back. So we turn that on and off. And then I suppose one of the added additions we put in, and it saved us big time towing the van one time, is uh, this jobby. So that's an Oricom, you can take that off. It's an Oricom tire pressure monitoring system. So oh, that's one thing I can save you a bit of dosh on actually. Jump on, there's a code here and I'll put it in the link, but that can monitor up to 10 tires. So for us, I've got one in the 200 and it monitors the van and the car tires. And then this one here monitors the boat trailer and the the um, 300 tires for Beck. So you can set low pressure alarms, high pressure alarms. Uh, and you can keep an eye on your tires. So pretty, it's really good safety device. Hey, I can't believe we never had one for so long and then it saved us having a blowout one time. If you want to go and check that out, I'll put it in this video because um, yeah, it shocked me. Eh? I'm like, oof, we're bloody lucky we had that fitted or we could have ended up shredding or I don't know, could have had a prang or anything. Anyways, uh, that's the inside. We really haven't done too much. It's just a really nice rig inside. They're more like a luxury SUV than uh, than a 4 but I suppose that's the way everything's going, eh? Anyway, I have to get it off road and show you how it goes. One cool thing, look at that. It's got like an induction phone charging pad. You just drop your phone on there and it charges it up. <laughs> uh, one thing on the inside we have done, they're all filthy at the moment, sorry about that. But ARB released their new range of um, floor mats inside, so the dirt grabbing ones. They're fully molded, they clip to the floor, got a bit of tread on them. So they're working really well, as you can see, and in the back as well. So it keeps all the dirt and sand and stuff in there from the grubby kids, and you can just vacuum it out. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. How did this car come about? I was chatting to Caleb on the phone, and he said uh, one of my customers just pulled out of a 300 series build. Uh, hey, you guys looking, are you gonna plan on doing one or what? And I'm like, oh, we weren't really planning on it. And he goes, well, if you're actually thinking of it, you should jump on this one or it'll probably be like a 14, 15 month wait to get another one the way things are going. So at that stage, um, I don't know, I'd had a few beers and we said, well, let's just build it. I just want to do a neat wagon build, see how that goes before we commit to um, chopping one in half and uh, building one like we did the 200. But that's how it came about on a canceled order and we managed to snag one, which was over 12 months ago. There you go. Towing, what have you done for towing? All right, let's have a look. So come down the bottom here, we'll swing down. Now, first thing, towing the boat with this one, um, because it's got such a, a big lift in it from the GVM upgrade, we needed a drop hitch. So this is a hot hitch. I'll drop in the info for you and you can grab one of those. Super light, one like forged alloy hitch, uh, rated for three and a half ton. There's all the things there. So 
you can have um, ball weight of 350 kilos up to three and a half ton that comes as a kit with a ball and everything and a lock of a pin so that goes in there and it gives us our 150 mil drop so we can get the boat on nice and level and then in here we've got um, a red one that is for your breakaway on a caravan your breakaway um, controller this one is to charge your van through a DC to DC controller and then we just run a standard seven pin flat just in there so that is for towing and then inside we run a tow pro elite on this one so yeah there you go all right guys i think i think i've covered it all hey been going over in my head if i've missed anything but if i have i'm sure you guys will let me know if you want any more info or questions you have about the 300 build so make sure you hit me up in the comments uh we're stoked with the build we've got a lot of people to thank for it i'll list them all at the end of this vid love your support see you later eh?